Ireland get the win against Wales. They beat Wales 24-16. As a Welshman, it's a tough loss to take, but congratulations to Ireland. If you're an Irish fan, let me know in the comments down below what went so well, what worked. Wales fans, let me know in the comments down below what went wrong at first. I'm going to be as honest as I can. I'm not going to be biased. I'm just going to say it. As it is, let's go through the game quickly then. Ireland dominated the first half, absolutely dominated it for the first 20 minutes. In fact, they had 75% possession of the ball, absolutely dominated. And it was no surprise when they got their early try in the 19th minute. Ireland pick and go, Tompkins flies out the line. It's a pretty bad decision to fly out. You've got to stick with your team. You've got to hold your, possession, uh, your, your position. If he holds his position there, it's a simple tackle and Lama does not get over the line. He flies out. That leaves a massive gap. Lama gets through. His poor tackling, yes, from the rest of the players. But Lama crashes over and... Um, yeah, he's got to stay in his position. Although he had a great game last week against Italy, it is Italy in this step up. He did struggle today, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, Sexton does miss the conversion pretty widely, misses it, but uh, it's still uh, a good try for them. Injury concern for Wales. Josh Adams goes off injured in the 24th minute. Johnny McNichol, on who, when he came on, I thought uh, added something for us and did really well. Uh, half an hour into the game, Wales get their try. It's a lovely try for Wales. Uh, a lot more intensity uh, from Thomas Williams at the at the ruck. Getting the ball out quickly. Uh, he gets the ball out. Uh, Alan Wynn breaks through the tackle, gives a lovely offload to Bigger. Bigger runs through, feeds Thomas Williams. Thomas Williams scores. And at this point, I'm pretty confident because although we haven't played that well, and although Ireland have had all the possession so far, we are in the game. We are 7-5 up, and that's our first attack. But when you're that much under the pump, and when you're struggling that much, you're always going to struggle. Ireland, half an hour into the game then, get a try. Uh, it all starts with Thomas Williams' knock on. Wales, five metres line out from their own the try line. It's thrown up to Alan Wynn. Alan Wynn kind of launches the pass at Thomas Williams. He knocks it on. Ireland then get the scrum. It's thrown out to Aki. Aki hits the uh, player. He goes over. And then the ball's out to Tad Furlong, who just crashes over. And it's a second phase try, which, if we're being totally honest, isn't great. And the defence needs to be stronger. Yes, there are three men pushing him over. But the defence needs to be a little bit stronger there. And that's how he goes in at half-time. Um... Ireland going up 12 points to 7 and with 56% possession as well. So the second half uh, starts with some injury concerns for both sides. Henshaw going off for HIA and Dan Bigger as well. Neither of them players came back on uh, for this one. Uh, 47 minutes in, Ireland tries with Josh van der Flitz to drive him all 5 metres out. And they simply just push over. And it's really bread and butter for Ireland. They just really showed how powerful their pack was. Um, once again, although the scrum was much better from Wales, there were concerns about the scrum, concerns about the line-out. It's not as strong as it should be. And teams are absolutely exposing us in that position. And there's just not much we can do about that. Ireland at the conversion. It's 19 points to 7. But you still feel, you still feel as if we're in this game. We have an opportunity. We can still do something from this. And from that point on, until about the 60th minute, so almost 20 minutes, we dominate. We're in Ireland's 22. We're pushing, we're pushing. Hadley Parks has a fantastic opportunity to score. Picks a brilliant line. Goes to place the ball down, but drops it just short of the line. It's the correct decision by the TMO. Can't argue with it. So frustrating as a Wales fan. But that felt like such a big moment. But the biggest moment for me was we had a scrum five metres out. We've been putting the pressure on for 20 minutes now. We're doing so, so well. We have to score here, you feel, to really um, get back into the game. And it's so strange. Ireland are so tactically clever with this. They are collapsing the scrum on purpose, but not in such an obvious way that Roman Poit picks up on it and penalises it. He just resets the scrum, resets the scrum. The scrum is reset four times, I think. And on the fourth time, Dylan Lewis goes down under pressure from Tad Furlong and Ireland get the penalty. And you just felt like that was such a momentum shift. Ireland cleared their lines. They send the ball down long. And suddenly you feel as if that maybe was the big opportunity for us. 
Then about 12 minutes later, Ireland get a try, and it's the bonus point try for them. Uh, it's a lovely try, Andrew Conway, but once again, it's from that uh, pick and go from Ireland. So powerful, so dominant, they draw in defenders, but it all starts from George North. It's a Wales scrum, about 10 metres out from their own try line. Gareth Davis goes on the blind side, which is a bit of a strange decision in my opinion there. Fires it into North, and North drops it. And North only touched the ball two times in the game, and one of them times... He drops it. So, yeah, George North really struggling at the minute, you feel. But Andrew Conway does really well to finish in the corner. The ball goes wide. It's lovely hands by Keith Earls as well uh, to get that ball wide. Uh, the conversion is missed to make it 24-7 to Ireland. 79 minutes, finally, CJ Stander is sent to the sin bin. But what a game he had apart from that. He just ruined everything for us. It was so frustrating. But quality, quality player, and you can just sit and applaud as you watch him play. If you watch my preview, you'd have known I'd have spoken about that, about the battle between him and Tiprick at the breakdown, and he absolutely won it. He was immense, just slowing the ball down, and just slowing it down. So Roman Park would shout release, he'd give him a second, and then he'd release it. And it just slowed things down for us, and he was so good at it. Wales did get the last shout out of the game, getting a try at the end. Chipper getting a try. Wales driving them all uh, and powering over. Conversion was added by half penny to make it 24 16, but Ireland absolutely deserved this victory. So, what did Ireland do so well? Well, their power game, they won the physical battle. Absolutely won the physical battle. They got over the gain line. They were powerful, they dominated the set pieces, and that's what they needed to do. They had good ball off, um, off the breakdown, and Conor Murray actually had one of his better games for Ireland. Sexton was controlling his men in front of him, and he did that really well all afternoon. And Wales just started so slowly, and gave Ireland so much time and possession, and Ireland, although they're not the most creative of teams, when you give them that much possession, they are going to punish you. Positives uh, for Wales, you'd have to say the creativity. When we did actually have the ball, we created opportunities. Thomas Williams, once again, looked very, very alive and awake, except for when he dropped the ball. But apart from that, apart from that, when we created opportunities, we did look dangerous. But the problem was we just didn't have enough of the ball. Our line-out really struggled today. Uh, Ken Owens did one throw, which was so far on the Irish side that I could have caught it. It wasn't great. And um, I'm not, I don't like to slaughter players, but players such as George North, he's just not in form. He's not in form. There's, you can't pick someone like him anymore, in my opinion. Josh Adams went off injured. So if he's out for two weeks' time, North will probably play. But if I was Pivak, I would start with McNichol and Adams and Halfpenny at fullback. I just don't think North is in form at the minute. And I think that it's tight and... You should be picking players on form. And if North can only touch the ball twice in a game, and one of the times he drops it, uh, the other time he catches it and gets tackled straight away, you've got to be questioning, why is he not trying to get involved in more in the game? Our defence at some points were caught too narrow. Uh, we were way too narrow. And then Stockdale was getting some lovely run runs out wide. Conway, Lama were all getting these all awesome lines to run, really. And in fact, to be honest, in that first half, Ireland should have been so much more ahead than they were. So next up for both these teams, Ireland head over to Twickenham to go for the Triple Crown. That'll be a great match as England face Scotland later this afternoon. There will be a review for that one. And Wales then welcome France to the Millennium or the Principality. France have Italy at home tomorrow. You'd expect them to get at least a bonus point victory there, or at least a victory, sorry, and probably get that bonus point. But a lot to work on for Wales. Ireland will certainly take the positive from this one. They really fronted up and they won that physical battle. And CJ Stander was immense and I hate him. But congratulations to Ireland. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Subscribe and leave a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Where did it go well for Ireland? What do Wales need to improve? And I'll see you on the next one.